In this video I'm going to show you the best way to box in some pipes just like this. <laughs> JB here and thanks for uh, checking out this video. As I've said already, today we're going to be boxing in some pipes just like these um, that are in the hallway of a client's house. So I've got some MDF outside, I've got some softwood, let's get cracking. So the first thing I need to do is decide how far out the boxing's going to uh, go. So looking at what we've got here so we've got the pipes we've got a couple of brackets holding the pipes now i've got some 12 mil mdf i was thinking about 18 but that's probably just a bit excessive so i'm going 12 mil mdf to box this in i've also got some 20 by 20 mil softwood to use to join the whole box together now i haven't got a lot of room down the bottom here in between the pipe and the thermostat so I might not be able to use the software down here but what I will do is use some uh, little connecting blocks to possibly fix this against the wall here um, but anyway so working out the thickness of this box or how far it's going to come out I'll just find the furthest point away from the wall which is here and measure that which is about 32 millimeters so if I take that to I want to take that really to about 40 to give good clearance and then I need to add also another 20 millimeters for the softwood so it may seem a bit excessive but I'm going to come out at 60 millimeters here so my end panels which will go here and here I'm going to cut at 60 millimeters and then I can decide how wide I then want to go with the box Now I've got my two MDF side panels cut and what I need to do now is just work out what position I'm going to put it in against the wall here. So I do need to cut out part of the coving and I will need to profile this a little bit, uh, do a cut out for the skirting and the pipes at the bottom. Now luckily this coving is polystyrene so I'm in, a, I'm in luck here because it's going to make it really easy to cut but basically I've put a mark here and what I should do now is just cut that section out and take it away bit by bit because I don't want to take too much out and then realise once this goes in I'm left with a, um, a rather large gap. Now the other thing here as well is the fact that I bought 2.4 meter lengths or 2.4 meter sheet of 12 mil MDF and the ceiling is a little bit higher than that but that's okay because I do want to leave a gap at the bottom and I'm going to silicone that because I don't want the MDF sitting directly on the floor anyway so that's all good and actually there's still a bit of coving left up here which should just about hide the gap at the top. 
Yeah, that's going to work out just perfect actually. So probably a 5mm gap at the bottom, giving me a little gap at the top here. But of course I'm going to fill that anyway, so it should look pretty smart. Now I just need to get the bottom of this end panel cut out to go around the pipes and the skirting. So I've got a little bit of play here, which is fine. I've got my 5mm spacer, so I'm going to use that as the amount that I'm going to lift this end panel up by. So with that in position, I can mark where these pipes are and the cutout that I need to do on the side of this panel here. and that is almost spot on. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting that packer underneath there but I can see exactly where I just need to trim just a tiny bit more and that will go straight in. There we go look at that so we got that five mil spacer underneath that's going to give me room to put a nice thick bit of silicone to seal the bottom but the rest of that goes around that pipe work really nicely so once that's fixed to the wall that's going to give me a really good finish nicely fitted so what I'm going to do now is get this fixed to the wall so that's definitely in place because I'm going to need to use some small fixing blocks on this I think so I'm going to get that bit fixed to the wall now 
and then I can get the other side cut. I only need to cut out for the skirting on the other side, not the pipework. Cut the cove in, cut the end panel out for the skirting, and then I can roughly work out how big a piece I want to go over the two ends. So uh, let's get this on the wall. So just put in the last block on this end panel. And that's because I've got a very small gap between the radiator pipes and the radiator valve. And if I've got a 12 bit of MDF and some 20 by 20 softwood, I cannot get that in that gap. So by using these blocks, it reduces it by a good sort of 8 mil which is then enough for me to slide this bit of timber or MDF between the pipe and the thermostat. There, so I've got all the blocks on here now, particularly one at the bottom there, as I said already, that's quite a, a weak, vulnerable spot right here. So let's get that fixed on the wall. Now with all the blocks on the end panel here, I've marked with a hole punch where the holes are going, um, or where the screws are going through the blocks. I'm just going to get these drilled now. So anyway, I've got the end panel on and I've just glued or just put some glue on this bit of softwood which I've just temporarily clamped into position. So I'm going to screw that together here and then that will be that side finished. Now I've got the end panel on and also the softwood here which is going to allow me to screw the face panel to the end panels. I need to cut, I now need to cut this front panel here. So just thinking now about how wide I want this um, front piece to be. I don't want to go excessively big but I do want to give myself some room between the end panel and these pipes unlike this side where we were restricted with the pipe and the thermostat. So I've decided to go about 110 millimeters which will make that front plate or the front panel 
that wide which should actually look like quite a nice bit of boxing I reckon. Right, back outside, let's get it cut. Now with the first side fixed to the wall, I have now prepared the other side and I have got a piece of batten against it here. I have cut the bottom out for the skirting, so that goes nicely round there. And I've put this timber on the back because I now need to fix this in the right position. Now the best way for me to do that is to take my front panel that I've cut, I'm going to fix it to this side and then what I can do is just gently tap this in and then mark it exactly where it needs to go and then I can just drill it and screw it to the wall. So just make sure we put my, my 5 mil packer on the floor, that's important, and then we'll just put this up and get it fixed just in a couple of places, don't need to go mad here. I'm just going to put a fix in right here. So that's in the right position, it's just to hold it. And we'll just do the same a little bit further up. This is really just to hold it in the correct position for now, so I will need to take it off again. But that looks really nice down there, feels good. Now with that front panel um, temporarily fixed in position, I can now knock this side panel in and I know exactly where it needs to go. Great, so with that in position now, what I will do is mark down the wall the position of the, the end panel. Then I can take this front panel off and I know exactly where to fix that. With this end panel in position, or with it marked on the wall, I've now been able to mark the holes where I'm going to fix this. So. Uh, Let's get those drilled out, get some wall plugs in, and we'll fix this to the wall. I wasn't able to put this bit of batten on the side here before I screwed it to the wall, obviously, because I wouldn't be able to get to that batten to screw it to the wall. So this piece I'm just having to screw in through the sides, and we'll fill that in with some decent wood filler later. those holes are sunk or those screws have sunk quite nicely that will allow us to put a fair bit of filler in there now we've got both sides on they're secure I've got the batten on the front of this second end piece that I put on now it's time to get the capping on or the front piece. So I just need my packer, my 5mm packer. There we go, so that's in position there, so it gives me that little gap at the bottom. 
Now I have said already that I, or as you've seen already, I've already screwed these in. So these should pretty much just locate into those previous holes. Yep, lovely. Just want to make sure they do sink in. There we go, lovely. That'll just give me a bit of space for some filler. Now I have decided not to glue the front panel on. I'm thinking just in case there is any access required to these pipes. I am going to be filling these holes, but at least you could rub that down, find where the hole is and uh, knock the filler out. One solid box around your pipes. Now all I've got left to do here is to fill the holes in, give it a sand and I'm going to stick some primer on it so it's not just a, a bare bit of wood so at least it's it's going to be ready to paint the same colour as the wall. Now it's time to fill the holes so I've got myself a couple of clean filling knives there we go and I've got myself some Ron Seal High Performance wood filler done a video on this but this is really good stuff so if you've got any holes in wood go get some of this it goes off really quick really hard it's absolutely brilliant to sand and mould into a shape that you need to. Actually at this property I've got a bit of skirting board I have to reconstruct. There's a big chunk of it out so I'm going to stick a load of this in and sand around that. So uh, this is what I'm using. As I said to fill in the holes on this boxing that I've just done. So it is a two part filler which means that you've got some almost oily stuff here. We'll just do a small amount to begin with. I don't want to do, end up doing too much. And then you've got some hardener here. If you have got some of this stuff and you haven't used it yet, the guidelines for the hardener are a golf ball to pea size so golf ball filler pea size hardener and then we'll just give that a quick mix up now I have got another pot of this in the van but this stuff has been open for a while and the actual filler itself is starting to dry a little bit that also means that it goes off really quick so that's why I'll just do it in small amounts shouldn't need too much Well, the filler's dry, so uh, let's give it a rub down. Tell you what though, it's getting a bit dark outside. Cloudy and raining.
There we go guys, job done, lovely. There it is, looking pretty smart. So the holes have been filled, I've sanded all the filler down and I've given it a real good going over with the orbital sander and I'll tell you what, it's looking pretty nice. If only you could feel this, but that is super smooth, really, really nice. All the way around there. Now that's how you box in some radiator pipes. Yeah, I've just got a bit of mess to clear up, but that's how it looks. Well pleased with that. Right, well I'm done now. Gonna do a little bit more here and then uh, get out of here, you know what I'm saying? So thanks for watching, I hope this video's helped. Thanks for your support. Don't forget to subscribe, that'll be fantastic. And, uh, oh yeah, hit that bell icon so you receive notifications when I release a new video. Oh yeah, fantastic. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you real soon. Before you go, check out some other cool videos.